I was born in Tibet, 1953, and Kamlun Chinese who came to Tibet 1949, and then uh, 1959, and then 1950, especially 1956, 57, 58, fully promised that the Tibet was controlled by the Chinese government. And, and then 1959, there's a corporate uprise in the beginning of the year, and then March of 1959, and Dalai Lama flee from Tibet to India, about 100,000 Tibetans from special people who are close to India or Nepal borders have a chance to, to leave Tibet. So my family, my parents are um, part of that uh, group for the time. But my father was not a saint, <coughs> excuse me, saint painter, but he was a great, really a, a well-respected uh, lay monk in my hometown. And so kind of like I'm, the son is kind of like a following a lineage, sort of the father's direction. He was involved a lot in the community. So 1959, so especially the Chinese, uh, the Chinese militaries and the government are targeting for the people who are more involved with that kind of person. So we know down the road there's a having problem in our family, no question. At that time, not only people are putting in the prison, but every day, the routines, kind of like a two or three uh, 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 prisoners come bring into the public place, and they tell a lot of stories about what he or she had done for, you know, a lot of mirror stories, and then beat them there, you know, a lot of it's the, to beat them right there to, to the death. And my father's turn to put in the prison, so which I said earlier, and, and we've, we left that night. We crossed that. I remember we <clears throat> we walk, you know, that uh, next to the river, and there's a bridge we need to cross. And I remember that so vividly. We we're so afraid. We thought there's a, some kind of there's a, a Chinese military in the in the bridge. But that's the bridge, one of the only bridge in that area you have to cross there. But there's no other road. So we went there, and then we. My father told. To my mom and we are wait there and he will look if there anybody in the bridge. And he went for a while and we waited for a while. And we were so afraid in the middle of the night. And then my father came back and said, let's, let's go, there's nobody there, luckily. So we, we crossed the bridge. Those are areas, of course, my parents know so well, there's a hometown. So they knew one of the very safe cave. And but then what my, my, my mom, is carrying uh, my sister at the time she was a few months old, and then my father carrying a little bit, as much as he could for zamba, the barley flour, and dry, dry cheese and dry meat, and and so and they carrying me too at the time I was age five or six. So we crossed the bridge, and almost like a time is running, you know, and so then. A lot of food, I remember my father did, it was he dig the sand and put it underneath the sand. He want to come back the next day because so we need to climb the mountain. And so we, we stay in that cave in the whole night. And next day, next, as soon as the dark, my father went back to the place where he hide the food. And he come back, he said, all the foods are gone. I don't know what happened. The animal eat it, or I don't know what happened. I, so, so like that. It's just then travel, and then days and days and days. It took uh, over two months to cross the Himalaya. There was a winter, and very cold. And uh, so, um, it's really nowadays. I'm thinking about. It. I really don't know how we survived. So we luckily crossed the bridge. I mean the mountain. And came to came to Nepal, Solokumbu, in next to the Mount Everest. And there is already a lot of uh, refugees already there. <clears throat> and my mom, my mother, really uh, kind of she was uh, she was a lovely uh, 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 woman. And and in the hometown, she has a well kind of uh, reputation. She always takes care of the, you know. 
we, no, we don't call a homeless, there's not much homeless there, but like a pilgrimage, mm -hmm. like a lots of pilgrimage come. So like everybody knows where they can find the food. The first thing is they come to in my, our home. So she feeds every single people, really. So luckily, I mean, because of those lot of people who are already in, in, in Nepal, in Solokumbu, so they came, they know we came there, and so the few days, we have not, not difficult to finding the food. So they're bringing food for us. So I thought, wow, this is just some kind of like a circle, really. And then 1960, I believe 1960, three, four, and then all the, the borders are sealed. Meaning like a, in this part of area, there's lots of um, Nepalese, uh, the police are very much, and then other side is a pack of Chinese military. So there's a, even a single pe person cannot escape from Tibet. So there's no words, no news. So then we came to India in 1964. So, so 65 came to India. Again, it's so difficult. Not knowing the, the paperwork, not knowing have need a passport or permission to <coughs> travel to the country like India. So we came, huge number of people, Tibetans, from Solokumbu, come to India, in the border of India, in there called, called Zainaga. That also I would like to one day to see. And, and first thing is we saw the trains, we are, you know, like we heard about a train. And I, I was so interested in what the train means. And we heard, we, you know, they say the, the house that connect to each other and then running around or something like that. I thought, what that's all about? So we just put our things in the, there, and we ran to the train station, and we, we, we saw the train. I thought, wow, what's this about? And, but we ended there eight months, and so hot. And I remember a lot of people died there. I think I believe about uh, three to four hundred people came together. We call the Zainanga camp. It's just, and we, 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 we ended there, and then Indian government uh, as a local police, they didn't want to go travel to India, so we just ended there for a while, and not knowing to what to do, and we're sending lots of messages or writing to, to in Dhamsala, to India, to passing to his son, and say, please help us, we are here, we want to come to India, but we don't know how, and they say, anyone would like to join for the Indian militaries? They'll, we'll, like to, we'll let you go the first. So I thought about, hmm. And I was there at a meeting, I was just listening to that talk. I thought, it just suddenly I thought, okay, I would like to join that. Not because I want to join for the military, but, but then I, my idea, if I get into India, then the, down the road I'll bring my family. So I, I give my name. And I asked my mom, and I told my dis idea, and she said, oh, might be a good idea. And not only good idea, she didn't want me to let her go, but she, she asked, who has given a name? And one of my uncle is a great <clears throat> the dancer, and, and he, he's, come, he's going too. So that, that way, my mom is so comfortable. Are you all right? So then there may be a few months or so. So I came the first to India, that was 1964. And so long story. Then from there I went to school, the boarding school. I was telling today some of the kids in here, Kobe College. I said when I was in high school, or school, the refugee school, really truly, and we sharing one piece of bread in the morning. We sharing for our friends, and I remember we doing, doing like this. The one piece of bread, you know, feed. There's nothing just in the stomach, you know. Even you eating that, is still hunger is there, really. So we're sharing every day. So one day, I will eat the four breads, and at least I had some kind of sensation, something, yes, I ate something in that morning. And so next day, I'll be only the tea, but he will eat it. And the next day, he will eat it. So we routine like this. 
very hard. And while I was back to high school, and age of 11 or 12, I chose to be a monk. I took the vows, and we had 65 boys become a monk. And that's something like a very, also very tradition. The monk doesn't mean to live always in the monastery. So you be a monk, but living as a society, or in the school, in the college, or in art school. So it, there's no something like a no contradiction in a sense, or there's the sort of culture, uh, culture accept that. So I'm a monk, and I want to be a monk. When it's a young age, I have a, that kind of interest. And when I was in at that school in in high school, I play. They chose. I don't know how they chose me, but. They chose me to play a, a drama, so something like that. And there's a, 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 a program or play called All Men, All Women. All Men, All Women, they uh, have a show, and basically it's teaching to help to be compassion. And so they, the, the teacher, the art teacher, he thought, I'll be a good person to play old man. So I have a, that, they think I have a little skill for the, the you know, performing something. So then that way the, the, the director of performing arts school in Dhamsala, he came to our school, he looking for the, the students who have a, that kind of skill of music or performance or dance. And so then I thought, okay, so he's in here. I would like to be close to my mom. So I give my name. So then joined the performing arts school. But then Tipa was so good. I learned a little bit of music and performance, the dance and song and this. But that's the really the right place to be a monk. It's like, and then I'm looking for the monastery to join. And then 1969, I joined the monastery called the Namdel Monastery, which is the Dalai Lama's monastery.